Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Thadi Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Thadi Gopi Janabalabha Giribaradhari Gopi Janabalabha Giribaradhari Yasodanandana Vajajana Ranjana Yasodanandana Vajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tiravana Chari Jamuna Tira Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pravrikachari Ashtar Shat Shri Srimad A C Bhakti Vidant Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai. His confounder Chari Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pravrikachari Ashtar Shat Shri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai. Nama Chari Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem se koho shi krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shi advaita gadad har shiva sari gaura bhakta vrinda ki jai shi shi radha krishna gop gopina shamakun radha kun giri govardhan ki jai shi mai pur dam ki jai shi vindavin dam ki jai jagannath puri dam ki jai ganga mai ki jai imuna mai ki jai bhakti devi ki jai tulsi devi ki jai anant koti vaishna vrinda ki jai shi harinam sankirtan ki jai Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samaveda Bhakta Rindu ki jai. Gaur Premanande. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
So today is the disappearance of Sri Abhi Ram Gopal Thakur. So I'll be reading about him before we continue. Previous, previously, Abhi Ram Gopal Thakur, Sri Ram Das, was one of the Dwadas uh, Gopalas, or the twelve cowherd boys who descended with Lord Balaram. In Gorilila, he was an intimate devotee of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. One day, while overwhelmed in the ecstasy of Saki Aras, or loving re- friendship, Abhiram wanted to play a flute like a cowherd boy. After searching the forest, he found a log which 16 men couldn't move. Astounding everyone, Abhiram grabbed the log, made it into a flute, and played it. In the mood of a cowherd boy, Abhiram Gopal carried a bullwhip named Jai Mangala. Anyone who touched it became infused with Krishna Prem. It said Srinivasacharya received pure love of Krishna in this way. Abhiram Thakur was a powerful acharya of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Atheists and blasphemers would flee in terror upon seeing him. He was Lord Nityananda's most vigorous preacher. Learned in all the scriptures, he also excelled in music, song, and dance. Abhiram used his home for preaching and serving Vaishnav pilgrims, not for sleeping. His house resounded with kirtan and Krishna kata, and was often visited by pure devotees. His samadhi is in 64 samadhis area. Sri Abhinam Thakur Ki Jai. Okay. So today's uh, verse, if you could repeat after me. Ato Isha. Jahi Twastram Grasantam Bhuvanatrayam Grastani Yena Naha Krishna Tejamsi Astrayadani Cha Ato Isha Jahi Twastram Grasantam Bhuvanitrayam Grastani Yena Na Krishna Tejam Yastra Yudanicha Ato Ishaja Hitra Twastram Grastan Grasantam Bhuvanitrayam Krastani yena na Krishna Tejam yastra yudanicha Hato isha jahi tvastam tram Krasantam bhuvanitrayam Krastani yena na Krishna Tejams Yastras Yudanicha Toi Saja Heat was Tom Krasantam Bhuvanitriam So, you want to try? Okay. Ato. Ato. Therefore, Isha, 
O Supreme Controller, Jahi Kil, Twastram, the demon Ritrasura, son of Tushta, Grasantam, who is in who is devouring, Bhuvanatrayam, the three worlds, Grastani, devoured, Yena, by whom, Naha, our, Krishna, O Lord Krishna, Tejamsi, all strength and prowess, Astra, arrows, Ayudani, and other weapons, Cha, also. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Therefore, O Lord, O Supreme Controller, O Lord Krishna, please annihilate this uh, dangerous demon Ritrasura, Tushta's son, who has already swallowed all our weapons, our paraphernalia for fighting, and our strength and influence. Purport. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Namam duskriti no mudha prapadyante naradma maya yaparatya jnana ashum asuram bhavam ashita chaturvida bhajante mam jana sukriti no arjuna arto jigyasur artarti jnani cha paratarasabha those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. O best among the Bharatas, Arjuna, four kinds of pious men render devotional service unto me. The distress, the desire of wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching for knowledge of the Absolute. The four classes of neophyte devotees who approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead to offer devotional service because of material motives are not pure devotees. But the advantage for such materialistic devotees is that they sometimes give up their material desires and become pure. When the demigods are utterly helpless, they approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead in grief and with tears in their eyes pray to the Lord and thus they become almost pure devotees free from material desires. Admitting that they have forgotten pure devotional service because of extensive material opportunities, they fully surrender to the Lord, leaving to His consideration whether to maintain them or annihilate them. Such surrender is necessary. Bhaktivinoda Thakur sings, Marabi Rakaibi Yavicha Tohara. O Lord, I fully surrender unto you, your lotus feet. Now, as you desire, you may protect me or annihilate me. You have the full right to do either. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurn Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaisnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shri He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpati Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavinishwari Vishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hare Pre Vancha Kalpa Taribhyascha Kripa Sandibhyevacha Patita Nam Pavinibhyo Vaishnabhyo Namonama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadad Hare Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Good morning so I was thinking, um, before preparing for class, what is the one thing that people are so proud of in this world? Abilities. Abilities. Children. Beauty, children. What about you, Saul? Beauty. Beauty. Money. Money. But actually, people are proud of their bodies. Mm -hmm. right? When I was uh, traveling with uh, Maharaj at the airport, he told me that he read something uh, interesting. 
The human body needs about six things for it to be tolerable. <laughs> tolerable. It needs a, it, it needs six things for it to be uh, bearable to other people. First, we need a, a bath <laughs> every day. The second one is shampoo. The third one is soap. The fourth one is deodorant. Uh, the fifth one is toothpaste or brushing your teeth. And then the sixth one is some type of fragrance or oil. But if you don't do these, the body, it becomes stinky and disgusting. No one wants to sit next to you. So even every day, we have to maintain this body. So the nature of this body is exactly that. It's not really a, on its own. It's not so... You have to maintain it. You have to put a lot of effort to making it look attractive. But what actually makes the body attractive is the soul. But hardly anyone is interested in the soul. Or they're getting the wrong information from other people. So the super soul, it sanctions the desire of the soul. Um, we were in Mayapur, and His Holiness Banu Maharaj, he said that we can only desire, but the super soul, he gives inspiration. Like let's say, for instance, I want to raise my right hand. I have the desire, but without the sanction of uh, the super soul, I can't lift my hand at all. So we're actually, um, we're dependent on the super soul. So this purport, it has an interesting comparison. Who takes up to devotional service and who doesn't. And you can see this when you're on book distribution. The eight different types of people that come to your table. Some of them, they are considered the grossly foolish people. These are like the fruitive workers. They make their whole life just trying to work hard and acquire money. So they're not so interested in taking a book. And I, when I was traveling also, Maharaj would introduce me as a book distributor. And after class, some of the devotees, they would ask me questions about book distribution. So I'd give them my little uh, advice. And I told them, you have about two or three minutes of the person's attention before they lose, <laughs> you lose them. So you have to say something inspiring or you have to say something that catches their attention. And in this Kali Yuga, Manda Sumanda Matayo, People are lazy, misguided. They're not very uh, interested in taking up to spiritual life. But there's a change now. When you hear, when people hear the word karma, reincarnation, meditation, most people are becoming interested in such subjects. So you have two or three minutes to, you know, talk about the book. You have to basically convince them and yourself why this book is important. <laughs> So it's a difficult task sometimes. And someone said that uh, book distribution, it requires a very high sadhana to wake up early, to read, and to chant rice, nice rounds. And uh, His Grace Vijay Prabhu, he's always an uh, inspiration to all of us. And the other types of people that are not interested are there those that have knowledge, but their real knowledge has been stolen away from uh, by Maya. When I meet a lot of scientists and, you know, proud, high positions in society, they don't see our books as something very important. But when you tell them, you know, what is the goal of life, they don't know how to answer that. And when you ask them what happens when you die, they avoid that question <laughs> completely. Because material happiness ends with the end of this body. You may try to enjoy and enjoy, but, you know, the, I was uh, talking to uh, Ishtadev, my god brother, and he just turned 80 years old. And he said, you know, you wake up and then you notice your knee is not the same. So he said, oh, I guess that he gave up. So the body falls apart, and so we shouldn't be too proud of this body or our knowledge. And sometimes the mind misleads us. Like, I ask people, who is your best friend and who is your worst enemy on books? And they say, I'm my own worst enemy. And sometimes people might say, my mind is my best friend. 
But I show him that verse where, for those who have conquered the mind, it is the best friend. But for one who has failed to do so, his mind will remain the greatest enemy. And in the purport, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and many of our great Acharyas, they have a, a common uh, denominator, a common, you can say, mood, which is fully surrendered at the lotus feet of the Lord. They're not interested in promotion to the higher planets. They're not interested in obtaining wealth. They're not interested in economic development. They just fully surrender. And they also teach us that mukti, or liberation, is also not very important. And in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, Shikshastakam, he says, Mama Janmani Janmanishvari Bhavatad Bhakti Rahoy Tikitoy. He says, I just want to serve you life after life. So he's not saying, please liberate me from this cycle of birth and death, but I just want to serve you. And then he says, Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundarim, Kavitam, Va, Jagad, Isha, Kamaye. He doesn't want wealth. He doesn't want a beautiful spouse to enjoy. He doesn't want mundane followers. He wants to serve Krishna. And these personalities, they're not just ordinary karmis. They are learned, and some of them have very, very exalted positions, like Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Rupa and Sunata Goswami. <clears throat> they are very, very learned, but they also gave that up to try to learn more about devotional service. And a lot of people, they concoct these, Prabhupada would say, uh, man-made duties, right? But Krishna, in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Sarva Dharman Parichaja. He says, to give up all of these forms of religion or duties. And what does he say? Next, after. Surrender to, Surrender to me. <clears throat> and then he says, Masuchaha, do not fear. But these demigods, they're praying because they're in an unfavorable situation. You know, this pastime of a Ritrasura is an interesting, uh, you can say, pastime. Because Indra is seen as, you can say, almost a, a bad devotee, you know. And Indra, we all know his pastimes. He sometimes becomes anxious because another person might take his post. So he sends an apsara up, or to, you know, seduce the yogi. And most of the time he succeeds. And he was cursed because he was very lusty to have uh, reproductive systems all over his body. But he was, you can say, uh, the sage who cursed him felt sorry for him, so he changed it to eyes. And it was described that when Lord Brahma, when he went to visit Lord Krishna in Dwarka, he told the, uh, the gatekeeper, please ter tell Lord Krishna that I'm here. Br Lord Brahma is here. So when the gatekeeper went to Krishna, Krishna said, Wish Brahma, what is his name? <laughs> so he went back to uh, our four-headed Brahma and he said, you know, Wish Brahma are you, what is your name? And Lord Brahma, he was, he was bewildered. He said, other Brahma, you know, am I not the only Brahma? So he led him, and Srila Prabhupada, he made the uh, purport that Brahma is also a post, just like Lord Indra. And within every uh, Brahma, there's a name, just like Surya is the name of the sun god. But his name is Vivishvan in this, uh, in this yuga. And so Krishna, he meditated, you know, and then suddenly unlimited Lord Brahma's Came. One with ten heads, one with thousand heads, one with ten thousand heads, one with million, one with ten million heads. And Lord Brahma, he noticed how small he was. And he also described that even other King Indras came, and all of them had more uh, eyes on their body than, than other Indras. And when all of them bowed down, it's... Um, Srila Prabhupada described that their helmets is as almost as if they were also offering their obeisances to Krishna. So Lord Brahma, he, he noticed how he's not so important, you know. And then he said that famous uh, verse how 
some people say I know everything about Krishna, but let them say what they want, you know. But for me, I just want to uh, glorify Krishna. Not only that, but, you know, we learn from these demigods, like Indra, how he wanted to kill the residents of Vrindavan, but Krishna protected him, and it was due to, you can say, uh, ego. He forgot who his real master was. And Indra, after pouring torrents of rain on the Rajavasis, uh, Krishna humbled him. And even Lord Brahma, he wanted to test the power of uh, Krishna, how he kidnapped the cowherd boys and the calves. And then even, he said, within a moment, you know, he came back. And Krishna manifested the same cowherd boys, and then eventually they had the forms of uh, Vishnu, four-handed Vishnu, all of them, even the cows. And then uh, Lord Brahma noticed that Krishna is actually his worshipable Lord. He didn't know at first because he was just a little coward boy, right? You know, what I, what I uh, really like about this uh, Krishna consciousness movement is that Krishna is very personal, you know. And who would ever, you know, have thought that the Supreme Personality of Godhead would be a little coward boy, right, playing the flute with his friends. No one wouldn't expect that. Because people have this awe and reverence um, conception of God. Yes, that's part of Krishna. He's Maha Vishnu. He controls everything. But at the same time, he has a very sweet uh, personal form that the devotees like to uh, worship, which is the coward form in Vrindavan. And in the Srimad uh, Bhagavatam, it says that the Lord is death for the demons, for the, but for the devotees, He's Amrita, or eternal life. You know, the devotees, we want to perform pious activities, so Krishna will see. But the demons, they try to hide from Krishna. Like uh, Amogalila Prabhu, he mentioned how, I think one of his friends, he would hide under a desk or a table. So that way God wouldn't see him. <laughs> but God is in the heart. You know, you can't uh, run from Krishna, you can't hide from Krishna. And it says that life is like riding a bike. You have to stay in motion in order to balance and keep going. But if you have a, a slow pace, you fall down. And if you go too fast, you may have uh, a crash. So we have to learn to balance material life and spiritual life. And not only that, but to not remain stagnant. You know, I mean, I'm, not, I'm very new to the movement, but I have seen uh, devotees come and go. And there was this uh, devotee that asked Maharaj, you know, can I go back to college or can I go back to, you know, going outside? And Maharaj gave this example how a bag of mustard seeds, there's so many of them. But if one falls out, would you notice that mustard seed? No. So similarly, there's so many engineers, there's so many doctors, there's so many teachers, there's so many other occupations. <clears throat> But if a devotee decides to leave, that's a big loss, right? Because Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, um, after many, many births, those that know me in full or in truth, they surrender unto me. So we should keep that in mind, right? We always have free will. We could leave or we could stay. But those that stay, they have a higher duty or a higher responsibility to educate the people about Krishna consciousness, to remind them of who Krishna is. So also, life has ups and downs, just like the, the demigods. Sometimes they're enjoying, and then sometimes they're suffering or they're in anxiety. I meet a lot of people in, on book distribution, and they tell me that I just want to go to heaven. But they have no idea that the heavens can also be attacked by the demons. The demons can reach heaven, <clears throat> the heavenly planets. And examples of such powerful demons are like Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, he controlled the whole universe. 
and says, by his eyebrow, he can even control the demigods. And so heaven is also not a safe place to be. But they don't know anything else besides this. <clears throat> to perform some karma kanda um, activities, and then so I can attain the heavenly planets. But the devotees know there's even higher, there's something higher than the heavenly planets, which is Vaikuntha Loka. <clears throat> and even higher than Vaikuntha is the topmost spiritual planet, Goloka Vrindavan. That's where we want to be. So when these ups and downs, they're due to our karma. Sometimes we may have a big house, sometimes we may have a small house. So that depends on our karma. Our previous activities, they're now affecting this life. And this life is also going to affect our next life. But Krishna, in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Yam yam vapi smaram bhavam tyajat yante kalivaram tam tam evaiti konteya sadatat bhava bhavitaha This form or this life is a preparation for the next. And at the time of death, whatever we are thinking about, um, that stay he attains without fail. So, what are you thinking of right now, Tyler? I was thinking about the question I'm going to ask in a moment. <laughs> so when we die, what will we think of? Are we going to think about Krishna and his devotees? Or are we going to think about you know, our money? Are we going to think about our activities that we haven't fulfilled yet, our desires? So Krishna is so kind. He gives us that opportunity to finish that desire. And um, Krishna guarantees that that state he attains without fail. So whatever we are thinking at the time of death, that determines our next life. And it's, that's very scientific if you think about it. Whatever one is attached to in this life, he keeps thinking and thinking about it. He keeps contemplating on it. And even at the time of death, you know, lust is very dangerous. I was uh, distributing books, and I said, these books, they help you to be free from stress, anxiety. And I saw a couple, and I said, lust. <laughs> and the man, he turned around, and he said, that's very dangerous. And I said, it is. So he came back, and I, I showed him a Bhagavad Gita. So I showed him the verses on how to be free from material desires. He said, how much for the books? So I said, all the wealth in the three worlds cannot equal to one page in this book. And they said, wow. And I said, but you can give whatever you can, you know. Most people give enough to cover the printing costs. So a lot of people, they are, they're not aware of what's important in life. They're just satisfied with what they see, what they can touch, what they can hear. And I was distributing books in uh, La Jolla on Sunday. And I asked this man, I said, excuse me, sir. And then he turned around. I said, do you like to read? He said, I like to read. I said, what do you like to read about? And he said, I like to read magazines. So I gave him this Bhagavad Gita. And I said, you should read this instead. And then he asked me, why should I read this? I said, this book gives natural happiness, not this artificial happiness by a big house, a fancy car, money in the bank. And then he thought about it, and he liked the idea of natural happiness. And I said, the happiness comes from the soul, real happiness. And the soul is searching for spiritual happiness. And then he thought about it more, and he said, that makes sense. How much for the book? So I told him, this book, it's, um, we just asked for a donation. And most people give around this amount to cover the printing. So he gave a very nice donation. And then when he was walking away, he said, this is the most, uh, what did he say? This is the most interesting conversation I've had all year. He said that. Because who is going to tell them who, who they are and what the purpose or the goal of life is? They're not going to talk about that. And so book distribution is an easy way to reach out to people, to encourage them to take up spiritual life. And... I was reading uh, Vijay's book, Treasures of uh, the Brihad Murdanga. It's such an amazing book. And he was, uh, in a chapter, there were some devotees that were kind of criticizing book distribution. 
you know why are you, why do we still go out and distribute books right millions are going out but how many devotees are becoming devotees so there was a lot of nice pastimes of how devotees received the book and they became devotees like Vijay says books make devotees that's true when I read uh, The Science of Self-Realization, that book, I was convinced after reading that book. So that's one of the books I like to distribute. But this material world, it's designed in such a way we forget Krishna. It's, Srila Prabhupada compares it to a fort, like a prison house. And the deity in charge of this fort is Durga Devi. And Durga Devi, they say that she has a thankless task. She has to give the facilities uh, for the living entity to be illusioned. And he thinks, I can be happy here, I can live here happily. But Krishna says, Daivi isha gunamai mama maya duratyaya. That this material energy um, consisting of the three modes are actually very difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Mam eva ye prapadyante mayam etam tarantite. So crossing over this uh, ocean becomes very easy. It, you don't have to swim, you have to just cross over it. It becomes the small, uh, f like water containing a foot of a, or a, what is it called? Yeah. Calf, the hoof, the hoof print. And this material nature is very, very dangerous. Um, Yamaraj, he asked you, Dister Maharaj, um, in that lake of poison, what is the most amazing thing about this phenomenal world? And you, Dister Maharaj, he said, countless creatures are going to the boat of death, but those that remain believe themselves to be immortal. How many people are, are out there thinking about death, right? They're not. Um, Maharaj, he says that the, one of the reasons why they enlist people between 18 and 25 are because people in that age group, they feel like they're invincible. They won't die. So they recruit these young um, people, and then, you know, they're very enthusiastic. They get them to attack the enemies, and then they replace them with new young people. But those who have uh, experienced long enough uh, this material world, it's not a place uh, to be. It's not a place to be comfortable. <clears throat> so the demigods are praying for their safety and position because of this retras or demon. Any one of us can, uh, you can say, be in this position. But the question is, how do we react to this situation? What are our thoughts, you know? Are we going to call out for our mom, or are we going to call out for Krishna, right? Okay. So, Queen Kunti and other uh, devotees, they prayed to Krishna. Uh, Draupadi, she called out for Krishna when she was in distress. And Queen Kunti, she prayed that these calamities keep happening. Why would a person... Uh, keep praying for these calamities to happen. Why? Yeah. Yes, Ravira Prabhu? Because for a devotee, when calamities happen, they automatically call out to Krishna. Mm -hmm. And Krishna appears, and so it's a she's praying that, she, that that urgency will continue, so that we, because she had experience already. Mm -hmm. All the diff difficulties they've been through, they called out, he responded. So now, you know, the, the war is over and safety is there, but Krishna's leaving. He said, forget that, let's go out to the forest again, mm -hmm. you know. You know mm -hmm. <laughs> she prefers. This material world is so dangerous that we forget about Krishna as soon as we, you know, Prabhupada describes that Krishna is like the sunshine and Maya is like darkness. So there he goes together side by side. And Srila Prabhupada, he says, if you give a poor man millions of gold coins and he refuses, doesn't that make him unfortunate? 
So when we distribute these books, even if we present the books nicely and they refuse to take it, that makes them unfortunate. But as a rule, we should always thank the person even if they don't take a book. Because I've heard that next time when they meet a devotee, they remember their conversation and how pleasant it was. And then they may take a book in the next one. I was distributing books and I asked this man, this young man, would you like a book on how to be free from stress? He said, no thanks. I'm just going to pretend like I'm not stressed. And he walked away. So that gives you a hint of what our society is going through. They're pretending that they're not stressed. They're pretending that they're not worried. But those that are honest, they know that it's a stressful world out there. Padam padam yat ve padam natesham. That this world, it's, there's danger in every step. There was a little boy, he was uh, walking, just regularly walking. And he tripped and then he scraped his knee and he started crying. So that gave me a confirmation that this world is a dangerous place. But fortunately, in this uh, Kali Yuga, there is one good quality which is uh, just you can achieve the other um, results simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Young people now, they're inquisitive about karma, meditation, yoga, guru, spiritual life. So when we say these words, people become attracted to them. And I'll end with the story that I read in Vijay's book. There was a little boy and he saw this old man throwing the starfish back in the sea. There was millions or you know, a lot of starfishes. So he went to the old man and he asked, what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm throwing these uh, starfishes back in the sea. And then the little boy asked, there's a lot of them, you know, do you think you'll actually make a difference? So the old man, he just smiled, he picked up a starfish and threw it back in the ocean. And they said, well, it made a difference in that starfish, right? So the little boy, he understood, you know, whatever little uh, action or whatever way we can try to help the conditioned souls, it actually makes a big difference. And Srila Prabhupada, he's very, very pleased with those who try to share this knowledge with others. And Krishna is amazing, and his pastimes are also amazing. And I remember reading that, you know, just like we sweat, water comes out of our pores. So Mahavishnu, unlimited universes come out of the pores of his transcendental body. That's amazing. Okay, so we should encourage one another to hear more about Krishna, to read more about Krishna, to distribute more information about Krishna from a devotee, and to uh, not discriminate, because you never know who will take books or who will become devotees. Um, I'll end with this. Someone asked His Holiness uh, Jai Pataka Maharaj, what is your favorite pastime of Krishna? And Maharaj said, all of them. <laughs> so all of Krishna's pastimes are attractive and they're amazing. We just need to uh, go out and distribute them, share them. Okay, is there any questions, comments, corrections, chastisement? Dravidu Prabhu. Question that I that you may correct me if I didn't get to hear you properly. I think you said something like probably he compared Krishna to the sun and Maya to darkness, which is certainly true. But he's he's quoting from the CC. Krishna Surya Sama Maya Hoyandakarya and Krishna Nayakarya, which he adopted as the motto for the Back to Godhead. If you look to this day, I mean, you'll say. Krishna is the sun, you know, where, there's, where, there's, where the Krishna is, there cannot be darkness, cannot be ignorance. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's what. So, you asked for corrections, that's a slight, that, and that was the only mistake you made in the whole, the whole. Thank you, Dravir. Balram, did you have No? Thanks, Govardhan, for a wonderful class. I remember I was there when Tribe Sakha Swami answered that question, and he, because he said when you're reading any of them, you're totally absorbed, like in the moment of experiencing those leelas. 
they're all equally powerful. And then he he said that he's compiling all of Gorlila into a, a unified book, you know, because mm -hmm. I thought that was a pre pretty awesome contribution to be made, so hopefully he'll be able to publish that soon. He didn't give any details, but he was saying why, because some focus on the early pastimes, some focus on late pastimes, and a few of the other ones have additional pastimes, so he was going to try to... Yeah, all the books that have them. Yeah, so he's going to try to put it all into one synthesized. So I have two questions, but they're not stump, que stump new questions. They're just, I'm trying to figure out, reconcile how things sort of work. And I just have some vague ideas, so I guess I'm asking the group as well. The past time in the, the Remembrance, we were talking about that that article was so powerful that if you touched it, you get Prem, you know? The whip? Yeah, that was pretty cool that you get Prem. I mean, it was saying you're getting some aspect of Prem, but I, I didn't mean if you're actually getting Prem. What was it saying? You're getting the potency? Yeah, you That's get the it. same. So, Dr. Gene says, and I had a few analogies, but I think this is the best one, that when he uh, travels with his wife and they go to Indian weddings and they go across the world and they have to take all these photos and sometimes people will say, oh, go, go, take a photo of this, take a photo of that, let me line up for this. And they'll think it's a simple thing, it'll just take a picture. But he's saying, I've been doing this for a long time, there's a lot of experience that goes into it. You know, there was so much work went into me being right there at that time to take that actual picture. It's not just, you know, let me take a picture of this, mm -hmm. take a picture of that. So these people are receiving Prem just from a whip crack. So is it that merciful that you can just be stumbling along and get hit by a whip and you get Prem? Or do you think you've qualified yourself to be in that position to get hit by the whip? Or is it really r random? Or you're in the association of these pure devotees, you're there, so now you get this benefit, the whip crack. Or, you know, is he the most merciful, the most fallen, and it's, what is it? He's distributing unmotivated, or he's just freely distributing Prem. So how free is that distribution? And is there, are you earning it, actually? Or are you just there for the whip crack? From what I read, it's, um, it's all of them. Causeless mercy, you know, if you're qualified, things like that. Like I've seen videos where someone's walking down the street and a cinder block falls on their head and just knocks them out, you know? Like, so that, that's, they're just walking and it hit them. I know it's karma and whatnot, but you're, that could have been anyone standing there. So you can get prame like that when you're with, when you're... Well, he, he, it's not that he's just walking around. He's, it's not that he's just walking around with... You're after Vijay. Go ahead, Jay. It's not that he's walking around just whipping people, you know, and <laughs> they're all getting Krishna praying, you know. <laughs> there's got to be, there's some, you know, there's some, yeah, qualification to get that, that whip, yeah. <laughs> so. No, he did mention that random, you know, that does happen. I've seen good things, or bad things happen to good people. It's happened to me, you know, all my life. And uh, Anyway, random happens when you have seven billion on the earth, and, you know, I don't know. Karma, yeah, no. Um, but I like the random idea, you know, the cause and effect. Yeah, but give, it, never, give it up now. Give it up now. There's, there's no random. <laughs> but they never ask, why are bad things happening to me? You know, they always think it's some uh, chance. They don't think there's a reason behind it. But what does causeless mean then? in that regard, if they're freely distributing or causelessly distributing mercy, but you're not just whipping it by chance, per se? I mean, Yeah, the, 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 this, this, this came up when, you know, a lot of these things came up when Prabhupada was with us, you know, he's asking. So, in one, in one uh, sense, you know, Prabhupada would say, oh, uh, you, my spiritual master has sent you all to me. You know, in other words, you, there's, there's a background you have, you don't know, and therefore, you, you, you know, you're coming at this point. But then another other time, people would say, "Well, you know, how did how 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 did I become a devotee? You know, I was just a rascal and doing this and so where did I get this good fortune? I have made you good fortune, you see. So, but in, but so it's a, it's a combination of both. Sometimes you see there's like a verse that reminds me of of uh, uh, Devahuti speaking to her son Kapila Dev in the middle of his instructions it's about the holy name." Famous verse, Aho, Bata, Shapachoto, Gari, and Jajigra, Gaybartati, Nama, Tubyam. Tepus, Taposte, Juhavusa, Snaraya, Brahmanachu, Nama, Gunanti, Ete. So, what it's saying is how wonderful it is that even a dog eater and someone low in the society, you know, uh, lowest, 
uh, if they're, the name, your name, your name, because Kapila is Krishna, if your name is dancing on their tongue, somehow they're chanting your name, then it's to be understood that in previous life they performed all sacrifices, read all the shastras, went to all the holy places and like that. So there's a background. It's not an accident. It may look like an accident, feel like an accident to you. So why me? You know, I'm, I'm just, but, but Krishna's reaching out and, you know, he's blessing those who are blessed. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, also in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in relation to this, there's uh, there's the description of Lord Nityananda, and Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says that whoever whoever falls down before him, then Nityananda will will deliver that person. So, and just like. <laughs> Jaga and Made, that pastime of Jaga and Made, they surrendered. They didn't, you know. There, there, there was an element of surrender there. To, to, so it's, so it's not like automatic, in the sense that, um, of course, yeah, the, the soul has to do their part. Um, yeah. Thank you, brother. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. The uh, the prayers of Chitraketa, which we're going to actually come across, is six sixteen. We're in the fourteenth chapter now. Yeah. So this whole pastime is culminated. So he has these these prayers when he finally re re realized the Lord under the instruction of Narada Muni he, he undergoes steroids just for a few days I think and then he has these incredible prayers in, in a meter that I cannot figure out you see, I mean there's no way to chant these, these verses but, but one of the lines is this yan nama sakrit chavanat pukashob vimuchate sangsarat which means um, uh, even chandalas men of the lowest class are freed from all material contamination merely by hearing one holy name of your Lordship. You know, I mean, it's like, wow, you know, they're so contaminated, they're like at the lowest class, but somehow if they hear the name, so this is a, a real inducement to, to, to go out on Harinam, distribute books, somehow or other, contact people, which can, just by, by one exp exposure to the pure name and the pure words, uh, they become uh, liberated. from Pramuchate Sangsara. So you may not see the liberation right away. They're not going to immediately throw <laughs> down their, you know, <laughs> the lease, whatever they got, and start chanting and dancing. But the point is that that's uh, it's so powerful when when given purely and received with some kind of receptivity. It, it's, it has tremendous value. So this is a very good inducement to somehow or other, you know, give it out to people. Thank you, Dravid. Okay, thank you for your time. Grant Raj Shumad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.